We got a lot of beautiful parks and landscapes here in southeastern Michigan, especially over here in Oakland County. And we are very adamant in this local area about protecting those pieces of, of land and the beauty that we have right here in southeastern Michigan. And so are other organizations around the state of Michigan, such as the Michigan League of Conservation Voters. And joining us now is their political and outreach director, Londell Thomas. Londell, thank you for being with us on today's edition of the Megacast. Oh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. Absolutely. So as we get started, tell us a little bit about your organization and the work that it does throughout the state. Yeah, so Michigan uh, LCV uh, really is focused on protecting our land, air, and water, uh, and doing so by really focusing in three areas. Uh, one is working with voters uh, to understand what the policies uh, are that are needed in their community and also really listening to the heartbeat of those issues that come from the ground and we advocate up uh, through the legislature. The second would be uh, that we elect candidates uh, that really focuses uh, on being green champions and understanding what those policies are and continuing to uh, be the four leader of those policies. And then the third would be to hold them accountable uh, to uh, the word that they said, right, to those policies. And so uh, we're working in three regions around the state, uh, which are Southeast, uh, West, and North. Uh, as the political director, uh, my job is to make sure that we really are engaging organizers to really talk to voters about uh, the issues that are plaguing their communities, because they bear the brunt of a lot of issues around climate justice, uh, issues around water, uh, issues around PFAS, if you will, issues around lead, uh, issues around uh, affordable water overall, right? And so we wanna make sure that they understand exactly what the issues are. And we also wanna make sure that we're, we're kind of at the drumbeat of, of have, helping to advocate for those issues. And a, and, a lot, and a lot of the advocacy work and a lot of the change that does happen on these issues has to happen at a local level. And I think more than ever during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen the impact, the true impact that local elections and that local leadership and local advocacy can have on hometowns, on, lo on your county area, and really on the state at a larger level. So uh, even beyond the more statewide issues such as, as affordable water and safe water uh, affordability throughout the state and PFAS and other big topics such as that. How does your organization working on the front lines really at the local level to try to inspire those those advocates to and, and those candidates as well, keep the candidates on local levels also accountable? Absolutely. You know, uh, what we found back in 2017, because the organization has really been focused on a lot of uh, you know, working at the state level, right? Working in Lansing, working to engage state legislators and, 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 and that kind of thing. But what we focused, what we thought about is in order to really engage voters at the local level, we needed to, to touch the municipal ranks, right? We needed to make sure that we were engaging those county uh, candidates for a county board and, um, and, and other, for mayor, for other local, uh, local positions that they would be running for. And so what we did is uh, we had a great opportunity in Oakland County to really engage with candidates uh, around our issues. And what focus that we, that we really zoomed in on is working with several partners there uh, to form what we call the Climate Jobs and Justice Platform. So we worked with uh, Oakland Forward, we work with Sierra Club, we work with Clean Water Action, uh, the Pontiac chapter of the NAACP, uh, Sunrise Movement. And we basically formed this uh, five point plan for infrastructural improve improvement and sustainability. Uh, helped us with transit and making sure that we're moving uh, the policies into the future there. So uh, really excited about that work that ended up translating uh, into a C4 project that we engaged uh, called the Vote Oakland County, uh, Vote Oakland County Green. Uh, and that was a project that we collaborated with Sierra Club on to really hold those elected officials accountable to that petition, to those five point plans, right? To make sure that they're gonna be uh, behind it uh, when once they got uh, elected to office. We're excited because once they actually did get elected to office, uh, Dave Coulter, who was uh, the Oakland County 
mm -hmm. uh, executive and the board of uh, commissioners actually passed uh, some of the most progressive and uh, sustainable plan around infrastructure. And we're really excited uh, for the work that, that is to come. So it was the work that we did on the ground and the people that got involved that really helped us to move things. And, and you talk about seeing these this, this advocacy work come to fruition and seeing action be taken by leaders that are in place because a lot of pe a lot of these leaders they're going to sp they're going to speak on the campaign trail about certain issues and then of course they're going to take steps back when they get into office because it is a negotiation it is a compromise between different people of different political views once you are in office but you do have an accountability a digital accountability tool for helping voters like like you and I like Erica and I regular people that are voting for these candidates on issues that are important to us like environmental issues to keep to keep track of where they're going how can people access that accountability tool and, and what does it do to help keep voters informed about what their local leaders are doing on environmental issues well you know there's a you know we're, we're probably most notable for our environmental scorecard that comes out every year when elected uh, decide they're going to run and basically we we talk to the community about that scorecard, right? But a lot is going on in Lansing and it's very fast paced. So we're really excited about this digital accountability tool because it gives us a chance uh, to see uh, what your legislator or what your elected official or public official uh, is doing in near real time, right? So that you can keep up with what's going on. You can keep up with the issues and you can actually call and, and ask your legislators uh, to vote on the right side of the issue, right? Uh, so if they wanna uh, access that tool, they basically will go to uh, michiganlcv.org, uh, michiganlcv.org, uh, click on the right-hand side of the menu uh, to the Get Involved tab, and you'll be able to access everything you need from there. So a few minutes back when we were first talking about the type of people you want to get involved, you were saying how you want to urge people to be green champions. And I love that term. Can you define that for me a little bit? When you say green champion, what do you mean? These are people who understand about the issues that play in communities, BIPOC communities of color, low income communities of color, um, around climate change, You're like you know, around the admittance that go in the air and fall into uh, the land that ends up uh, being consumed in our food, right? That understands the lead and, and uh, that, that is in our water, that understands the PFAS and that kind of thing, and understands the local policies that affect their communities that they represent. And so when they, when they go on and they, um, we, we endorse them, they basically fill out our environmental scorecard, excuse me, they, they fill out our endorsement questionnaire and they say, I'm in support of these issues. And at that point, it's up to us once they're elected to hold them accountable to such issues. And at that point, they become green champions. And we're proud to say that we have several uh, green champions on both sides of the aisle as we're nonpartisan. We're joined by Londell Thomas on the Oakland County Megacast. He is the political and outreach director for the Michigan League of, Conserva of Conservation Voters. Uh, you can find more at michiganlcv.org on their organization. And Londell, you talk about some of those more micro issues at the local level and at the regional level here in the state of Michigan. We, we all... We, we've been hearing ad nauseum about some of the more macro levels like PFAS and so on, but you, you mentioned focusing on some of those issues that are more local and are more, and are more directed at climate change issues that particularly affect com communities with, major with large minority populations, black, indigenous, people of color populations. What are some of those issues that maybe we aren't seeing in other, in other communities, that other communities in our local area here may not be focusing on because it's not necessarily something that's directly in front of them, but definitely impacts them because it impacts their neighbors? Well, you know, one thing about it, um, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, we have issues that tie us both to, together. So many of these issues are all the same, pretty much. If you're talking about BIPOC communities uh, and, and, and low-income communities, we're talking about issues that, that range all the way from water affordability, unfair shutoffs, um, uh, to lead that is in their water. So of course, you know, you got over 11,000 PFAS sites all across the state, but specifically like in Detroit, I remember growing up playing basketball uh, on, on a crate rim. That takes me back to the 80s, everyone. Uh, 
Uh, and I remember going to take a, a nice drink out of the faucet, right? And I drank that water and it was the greatest water ever to me at that point. But there was lead in it and there's lead in it today, right? And so we are consuming that uh, regularly. That is uh, causing cancer, it's causing all types of health implications. So we also wanna make sure that we draw the correlation between not just it being about uh, climate or not it just being about uh, uh, issues with land, air and water, but also that this is a health matter as well. So if we could get around that, then you'll, you know, people can be, probably be a little bit more sympathetic when it comes down to the importance of, of uh, common sense policy around this stuff. And water has been such a major re environmental issue throughout our state for years. I mean, we're surrounded by water here in the Great Lakes state. And on top of that, we've had a mounting issues regarding water, most notably, of course, is the Flint water crisis. And, and Flint still does not have clean water at this point in time. And then you take into account COVID-19. And people have been struggling during the COVID-19 pandemic because of job loss, because of wage cuts, whatever the case may be. And we've seen some precautions being taken by government agents, by governments over the course of the pandemic to prevent water shutoffs and prevent people from losing access to, to clean water. That's a vital part of day-to-day -day life for every human being on, on this earth and, and should be available to everybody. What is your organization doing right now as we're, as we're starting to see these precautions and the pandemic being kind of coming to its close here in the U.S. and definitely here in the state of Michigan, especially today, as some of these precautions that were in place for businesses have been lifted. What is your organization currently focusing on in, in terms of advocacy for people that are still going to be affected by these bills coming up, they're due, and their water might be shut off, and they might have, have access to something that's absolutely vital to themselves and their families in summer in Michigan? Well, you know, that's a great question. Uh, well, one thing I do want to highlight is uh, we talked a little bit about uh, really engaging around the municipal mm -hmm. uh, the side of it, but also the federal side is just as important as we're talking about a possible $2 trillion package uh, for the American Jobs Plan that we're excited uh, to have invested staff and time and, and, and resources in to make sure that we're educating the community around how important it is uh, to make sure that we receive those funds. And also, uh, we've spent uh, a quite a bit of time uh, of engaging, we talk about accountability, uh, our federal lawmakers, uh, our state lawmakers, uh, around why is it important that we get on board and that we sign, um, uh, sign up and actually support uh, the American Jobs uh, plan the way that it is, right? Because we're talking about jobs, right? We're talking about union jobs, good paying jobs, plumbers, roofers, welders, engineers, uh, cement layers, just to name a few. So uh, really excited about that. And just one, one other point, you know, we really are excited about, uh, you know, not having unfair Shut up, water shutoffs in the pandemic. But what we found is that there's still a little bit work to do on the municipal level because basically the, the, um, those bills were not necessarily wiped clean for people, right? Mm -hmm. They basically are accruing so that now you just are on a plan to pay back an astronomical amount over the time of the pandemic. It's not that it's just wiped clean. So there's still a little bit of work to do, and we're really excited to be working with uh, partners on the ground to help bring some accountability around it. Londell Thomas joins us on the Oakland County Megacast. He's the political and outreach director for the Michigan League of Conservation Voters. And, and you mentioned the American Jobs Plan, which is being proposed at the federal level, a major sweeping multi-billion dollar, multi-trillion dollar uh, American infrastructure plan that has been proposed. How would something like that being passed as is, as you mentioned, you're advocating for it to be passed as is, what kind of impacts could that have on the state of Michigan and then trickling down have impacts on a local and, and municipal level here in our local area? Yeah, when you talk about the jobs that will be um, engaged, again, talking about, I, I mentioned that the plumbers and roofers and so on and so forth will have an opportunity. We're talking about uh, electric cars, we're talking about uh, sustainability, uh, carbon neutral by 2050, 
right? And we're glad that uh, that our governor uh, basically engaged around uh, a plan that will allow for carbon neutral by 2050. So really is lifting that up and being at the forefront and being a leader around climate action. Those are the types of things that we can do uh, to really support our communities and help to advance uh, our future forward, not just for us, but for future generations as well. And it's not just jobs that this has impact on, because because uh, um, working on infrastructure, which has been a major issue, even over the course of the pandemic, with issues we've seen, such as the flooding in Midland, has become a topic of great interest here in the state of Michigan. What are some of the benefits, just structurally, that this infrastructure plan could potentially have here in the Great Lakes state? Absolutely. You talk about infrastructural improvements. You talk about, uh, it, you know, I was just, we were just talking about Flint, right, and, and how uh, the lead and the piping can be um, can be uh, 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 readjusted so that we can make sure that people can have clean drinking water. That's really the focus here. Is it not that we just are advocating for uh, climate change and, or, or, or issues that fight climate change, but also that we're making sure that folks have the right to clean drinking water, right? That when they turn on that tap, they have all of the confidence in the world that they're drinking something that doesn't have health implications in the future, right? And so, yeah, the, you're right. The infrastructure, uh, infrastructural improvements around the state uh, is going to be a, a great focus, hopefully, of those resources. But we want to make sure they go unchanged, right, so that we'll have all of the resources available. To, to make the necessary improvements. We're joined by Londell Thomas. He is the political and outreach director for the Michigan League of Conservation Voters on the Oakland County Megacast. And Londell, earlier you mentioned this is a nonpartisan organization. Yes, nonpartisan organization. We're, we are excited that, you know, across the aisle, we've been able to find common ground uh, on, on issues. Our thing is we want to promote green champions. That's what it is, right? And so, you know, organizations and and elected officials and candidates get that can wrap their mind around this early on as we're in the uh, endorsement process, we're we're in full support of. And we all know that changes need to be made for the benefit of all of us and for the benefit of our environment as well. So for those out in our community, in our viewing area, those watching us online on demand after the fact on civiccentertv.com and on YouTube, how can they find out more about your organization, maybe even get involved or learn more at least about the candidates and the political leaders in their local area and how they are taking on these issues? Yeah, actually, uh, I'll give out the website again. You can go to michiganlcv.org, michiganlcv.org. Click on the right-hand tab up at the top and, uh, yeah, on Get Involved. And then, yeah, let's get you signed up and you'll hear from us soon. Londell, thank you very much for joining us today. Just another couple of minutes. Anything else that, that you'd like our audience to know or would it be important for them to know before we say goodbye? You know, I just want to say on behalf of our executive director, Lisa Wozniak, thank you very much uh, to Civic Center TV for giving us the opportunity in this platform. Again, you know, the more that we're more time that we're able to have with the community to talk through these issues, uh, to educate on the issues and why it's important, it's, it's very important that we do so. So thank you so much again.